Hello, and welcome to show number 2342 of Eyes on Success, a weekly program covering a wide variety of topics of interest to people with vision loss. I'm Nancy Goodman Torpy. And I'm Pete Torpy. We came up with three principles that we tried to write every word of Timecrest in order to fulfill. So number one is there are no wrong choices. There's nothing that takes you out of a story more than having to dodge bad choices and memorize the correct ones. Secondly, we felt that choices should allow you to be yourself in this game. So anything on the player's mind is a possible choice. And finally, we wanted to make sure that small moments will build connections. So it's not just what you ask the characters to do, but it's how you say them. The characters have feelings and they'll remember how you made them feel. And those are the design principles of the very popular and accessible iOS game that we'll be talking about today. Jump into the world of fantasy with Timecrest, where the player gets a chance to turn back time and save the world as the main character in the Timecrest fantasy game from Sneaky Crab. We'll talk with Justin Ng, who co-founded Sneaky Crab with Lisa Gu, about how they made the game fully accessible with voiceover and received an Apple Viz Golden Apple Award for Developer of the Year. But first for our tip of the week. This week's tip comes from Justin Ng. So my tip is a writing tip. And the tip is when you're writing a story, usually you think about the big, big, plot twist or the moment where you you cried or stood up and cheered and people spend all their time trying to replicate those moments and they really focus on those big moments but the secret to big moments is all of the scenes that happened before it so my writing tip is the secret to making someone feel something in a story is the moments of build up what are all of the scenes that explain to you as the reader why the thing, the big thing that's about to happen really matters to people, really matters to the characters, really matters to you. Why does it solve a problem for the characters? Why is it so difficult for them to achieve? If you really think of the moments of buildup, it's almost too easy to have a big moment that feels really good in a story. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Let's start by meeting Justin and learning about what motivated him and Lisa to make Timecrest fully accessible. My name is Justin Ng, and I co-founded the company Sneaky Crab, along with my partner Lisa Gu, to make mobile accessible games with depth and emotion. And today we'll be talking more about your game Timecrest, which you've made very accessible to the visually impaired, but you yourself are not visually impaired, right? That's correct. Yes. Both me and Lisa are cited. And you said you developed a number of other games. Are they also made accessible? We have developed uh, other games uh, working for other companies. But when we got together to make Sneaky Crab, uh, we built Timecrest, uh, which is uh, our first foray into making a completely accessible game from the ground up. So with neither of you having a visual impairment, what gave you the idea to make an accessible game? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I'll be honest, we actually didn't approach this uh, making an accessible game at first. Um, We had both been working in mobile game companies. Uh, Lisa was a game director filled with creativity, and I was an engineering manager who was experienced with building games. And we were connecting over our frustration that it seemed like all mobile games at the time had become very sort of simple mechanics with flat basic themes and concepts that lack depth and emotion. So we left our day jobs and founded Sneaky Crab to try to solve this problem. Um, We wanted to make Timecrest, which would be a deep story with big twists and thrilling emotional punches. And so we put out this first version of the game. And very soon we were contacted by a blind user who told us that our game was 99% accessible, but had a lot of rough edges. And to be honest, not being focused on accessibility, that was a little bit embarrassing to to hear that. But within 24 hours of that email, we decided we had to dedicate Timecrest to being 100% delightfully accessible. Well, that's terrific. You know, I think that many developers 
are amenable to making the modifications that they need to make in order to make their apps and programs accessible, but they're usually not aware of it until someone makes them aware of the issues. That's correct. Yes, I have worked in a, actually a lot of tech companies before doing this. I've worked at Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and you know, I think it's a reflection of the culture of those companies that accessibility was always a thing, but it was never the top priority. You took your time to make sure there was accessibility labels on everything, but you never really designed the product with accessibility in mind from the beginning. And that was unfortunate. What we realized when we realized that this time crest would be perfect uh, for everyone is that if we built it with accessibility in mind from the beginning, uh, we could create a very delightful experience. And so it wasn't enough to just make an accessible product. We wanted to make it delightfully accessible. Well, that is terrific. Eyes on Success is made possible in part by our corporate partners. Underwriting pairs the impact of targeted marketing with the integrity of community goodwill. Learn more by sending an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. This week's focus topic is the Time Crest fantasy game and how it was made totally accessible to people using voiceover. Well, Justin, we talked about Time Crest and how accessible it is to the visually impaired. Tell us a little bit about what the theme of the game is and what it's about. So, Time Crest is a young adult fantasy story where you are the main character. A young mage named Ash contacts you frantically through a magical pocket watch asking for your help. Ash's world, Alencia, is about to be destroyed by falling meteors. You demonstrate the ability to save Ash's world by turning back time. There isn't long to celebrate as Ash is suddenly being hunted by someone who informs you that you've done the impossible. Your use of time magic has broken the rules of magic. So your first objective is to unravel the many mysteries that have begun to wind around you. Who tried to destroy Alencia with falling meteors? Why would they do this? Who's hunting Ash? And how did they already know what you've both done? Not to mention, how did you gain the power to manipulate time in the first place? And what are these rules of magic that you're already breaking? So as the story unfolds, you'll find yourself deeper and deeper into a magical world where you'll meet new friends and make some enemies, all while navigating some big twists and some big emotional punches. And I understand this is quite a popular game among the visually impaired community. I've seen it posted on Apple Viz, which is a site for iOS users who are visually impaired, a long time ago. When did this first come out? Yeah, so we're, I think, eight years now into TimeCrest. We've had three major releases to TimeCrest, and uh, we've launched... I think over 640,000 words. So it's become an, a, a beautiful, deep, and long story that uh, people have been enjoying all this time. Uh, we get a lot of support from Apple Viz. Uh, they, they were uh, incredible in giving us feedback, the community there. We listened to so much feedback and put a lot of changes directly into the game based on what everybody said there. Uh, we were honored with the Hall of Fame Developer of the Year Best Game from the Apple Biz Awards, and that really encouraged us to continue to keep working on TimeCrest all these years. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So this storyline seems like it extends essentially forever. Can you just keep playing and playing and playing, or do you eventually reach a conclusion and you have to go back and start over? That's a good question. So yeah, right now we're up to TimeCrest 3, and there are a lot of storylines and plots and mysteries that have been resolved and a lot of new ones that have arisen. And without spoiling too much, let's just say at the end of Time Crest 3, we still haven't resolved everything and people keep asking us for Time Crest 4. And so we'll continue to keep doing this so long as the community continues to support us. Yeah, oh, cool. So I just want to add one comment. You know, you've made this fully accessible to people with no vision, but I'm fully sighted and it's beautiful. It's kind of, you know, you'd figure somebody who put that much effort into making it so pretty would not also put in so much effort to make it accessible. Absolutely. I think that for us, it's not a matter of differentiating 
oh, this is an accessible product or this isn't an accessible product. So we're going to make it pretty or we're just going to focus on accessibility features. We think about all the people using our app, playing our game, and we want them to have the most delightful experience. So for us being sighted, obviously we want to make the game be a wonderful experience for sighted people. And that involves making it as beautiful as possible um, and everything in that experience. But we also play the game with screen curtain on, with voiceover on, and built a lot of features for voiceover that only exist for voiceover users. You know, for example, we added navigation sound effects that subtly beep uh, to give you a sense of place of where you are in the story if voiceover is on. If you're sighted, you don't actually experience this feature. Another feature we added was this feature where the music will follow your voiceover cursor. So since if you have voiceover, we know exactly what line you're reading at the time, we can make the music exactly match that line and give you a deeper experience. If you're sighted, we actually don't know which line you happen to be reading. And so as the lines come in, the music will change, but it might be slightly off from the line you're reading, um, which is unfortunate, but there's you know no way of knowing what you're actually reading at that moment. So until these phones have eye tracking capabilities, maybe some people should try playing this blindfolded. I completely agree. We worked very hard to make it a delightful experience with voiceover, and I think people would actually enjoy it a lot. You know, I love your term delightful experience because so many developers think, oh, I made my program, my website, et cetera, accessible. And accessibility isn't the entire answer. Just because you can find everything on the screen, have it speak to you, if it takes 400 swipes to get there or it's inefficient to use, that's not so good. You really have to make a delightful experience for the user, make it enjoyable. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think it comes down to how we think about it. Our experience with our devices can be very cold and very almost septic. And we approach this wanting to bring more emotion into the experience of using our devices. So when you're playing this game, not only do we want to bring emotion into the story and do all of the things in writing a good story that will cause you to feel a lot of things as you experience that story, but even in just using the app, are you going to have a good emotional connection to the app. We don't want it to feel cold. We want it to feel warm and inviting. So Justin did a great job of describing what it's like playing the game, but there's no substitute for listening to the real thing. And here's about a one minute sample of what it sounds like to play the game. Meteors are going to kill me and everyone else. Ellipsis. And Master Crow knows it's just going to let us all die? Ow. Sorry. Ellipsis. I just pinched myself. I'm trying to get everything to sink in, but it's hard. Okay. I'm taking some deep breaths. You can turn back time. I'm sorry if I'm repeating your powers over and over again, but it's one of the most amazing things I've heard so far. You can turn back time and Master Crow knows can freeze it. I'm talking to one of two time mages ever in existence. This. Ellipsis. Is. Ellipsis. So cool. Three exclamation marks. Like I said, I knew my watch connected to someone really, really special. But you somehow managed to exceed my expectations. Sister message. Ash is waiting. And as you can hear, the music follows the progress of the game. And what you were hearing there was the voiceover voice that I chose, which is eloquence, to speak the character's text. And, of course, you can change the voice to whatever voice you want. And you can actually adjust the volume of the music relative to voiceover, which is nice for people listening to the game. So that's just a small example of how the game goes. And you could tell from the music that the game was getting more and more exciting. There are some programs I look at and I say, boy, this must have been developed by someone who is blind because it works so well for someone who can't see. And I'm impressed that you guys being sighted have developed such an accessible app. Do you play this game blindfolded yourself using voiceover to test it out? Yes, we spend a lot of time in voiceover. We spend a lot of time with screen curtain on. 
Um, and we spend a lot of time asking for feedback in the community. We have some excellent beta readers and beta testers who we give early builds to who also give us feedback um, and let us know where we're going. But at the end of the day, though, I feel like it's really important as someone cited to accept the fact that I am cited and I'm never going to completely understand the experience of a blind person. And, you know, in, in kind of a paradoxical counterintuitive way, that opens me up to thinking about a lot more things that uh, someone who needs to use the voiceover features will will need for the uh, for the design of the features. Well, even myself as a blind individual, I always enjoy giving feedback to developers. But I'm just one person. I'm one blind person, and another person who can't see may use their device in a very different way and be comfortable with very different modes of operation. So it's important to get input from a variety of people. Yeah. And we love that uh, all of the different communities online, whether it's feedback we receive on Apple Viz, people who email us, there's a fan discord server uh, where uh, there are a lot of blind people. Everyone's constantly giving us feedback and challenging us. And uh, it's been really fun to go through all of that and know that there's usually a nugget in every single piece of feedback that gives us a new perspective and can make the product better. Is this a game that is also available on Android devices? At the moment, we're only available on iOS and Apple Watch. We have heard some requests that people wanted on Android, and it's something that I'd love to entertain in the future. Given that Timecrest is entirely made by two people, uh, myself and Lisa, we have to be very, very focused on what we do next. And a lot of people are asking for new content, and that that's where we've decided to focus. But we're very open to feedback, so please let me know if there are more and more people who want to experience this on Android. Um, we're definitely listening. How do you get it to work on the watch? The screen is really tiny. I mean, I understand that voiceover works on the watch, so the visually impaired experience maybe doesn't change at all, but the sighted experience will change big time. That's a really good question. And I think that we designed the game with Apple Watch in mind from the beginning. Uh, Timecrest 1 came out around the time that the original Apple Watch came out. Um, that was the reason why the, the New York Times uh, happened to mention uh, Timecrest, and Apple featured us in the uh, best of that year when the, the App Store came out for the Apple Watch. So with that in mind, we made a lot of little design decisions that kept in mind sort of the size of the watch and what an experience would be like to be able to get in and out of that uh, while not interrupting your your experience or you know your arm getting tired because you're lifting it so long in order to play the game. I can't imagine the amount of work that goes into making one of these fantasy games. It has to take a big bundle of effort to put that together. You talked about the number of words involved, for example, but the storylines and everything else. Tell us a little bit about that kind of effort. Yeah, you know, I'd say that writing the app was not a simple thing, and yet that was almost the easiest part of what we had to do. Similarly, making this game accessible was challenging, but it was almost one of the easier things. The difficult thing really is to write a long, deep, and involving story that brings you into it, that does some some new things. This is the kind of a story where you're the main character and you can make choices on how you want to progress in this game. And we felt like in order to really serve this format, we had to innovate a lot. You know, there are a few games in this genre where you make choices and we felt they fell into a lot of the same common problems. The game might be very ultra linear because you're just trying to memorize the correct choices and avoid trap choices. Or the game is forcing you to do or say certain things that don't reflect you or, you know, it, the choices push you to be someone that you're not. Or the game is overly abstract. You end up being this kind of godlike character that has too much power and control over the world. And there's no subtlety or connection there. And so we came up with three principles in response to this that we tried to write every word of time crest in order to fulfill. So number one is there are no wrong choices. There's nothing that takes you out of a story more than having to dodge bad choices and memorize the correct ones. So we made this rule, and this is a very challenging writing rule, that whatever choices you make will always lead you to a satisfying plot arc. 
You know, this rule means that there are entire paths that may have taken months for us to write that some people may never see if they didn't choose to go down that path. Secondly, we felt that choices should allow you to be yourself in this game. So anything on the player's mind is a possible choice. And even when writing, it might be inconvenient. If you've ever watched a movie, read a book, any kind of story where the main character is doing something where you just want to yell at them and say, you're being stupid. I know that this is about to happen. And you just want to be able to tell the character that, well, we let you do that in Time Crest. And let me tell you, there's a reason why the characters often have withheld information in stories, because it's very challenging to write a story where you as the player can say anything to them. And finally, we wanted to make sure that uh, as sort of our third principle, small moments will build connections. So it's not just what you do or what you ask the characters to do, but it's how you say them. The characters have feelings and they'll remember how you made them feel. So something you say to someone in chapter three could affect how they respond to you in chapter seven, because they'll remember how and what you said to them. And it sounds like this is kind of an evergreen game. You talked about Time Crest 1, 2, and 3, and a, perhaps a forthcoming version 4. So you can always keep updating the game so users don't get bored if they want to continue in the environment. That's right. I think uh, that's a very nice way to say that we went in with an overly ambitious story. Uh, we, we had a lot of ideas and planned out a story in the beginning. Uh, as you write a story, you figure out where you want to go, and then you have to figure out all of the steps in order to get there to those moments of build up to make the moments that feel really good feel good. And uh, I think we were a little ambitious with that, that it's it's taking a lot of different uh, twists and turns and a lot of different paths in order to get to those places. Do you ever play the game yourself, or do you know too much of the storyline of the parts you haven't gotten to yet? Yes, both of those things. Uh, I do play Time Crest a lot. Uh, I have different modes in which I play Time Crest, whether it's for testing. Um, I spend a lot of the time uh, just playing through the game and testing out new features that we're building. I always have to play the game with voiceover on. I have to always have to play the game with uh, screen curtain on. And I also like to go in and experience the story because um, the crazy thing is that even though I know all the paths and I know everything that happens, it's always different when you're playing and experiencing the game. There's something different about talking about these plot lines abstractly and editing them and putting them in. And it's another thing to experience it because then the characters actually become real. The other thing I wonder is, with all the time that you take writing plots and programming and testing the game, do you have time for playing other games that you might enjoy? Yeah, that's actually a, a good question. It depends on where we are in the sprint. It depends on where we are. Sometimes when we're really deep into the final stages of getting something out, uh, I think at the end of Time Crest 3, we were working so hard to get that done that there weren't really evenings and weekends. But there are definitely many phases. You know, one of the things that uh, I learned from Stephen King's process, he, he has a book called On Writing, is he actually spends only half of his time writing, and he actually spends the other half of his time reading. And that helps sort of build his ideation, his creativity, and lets his mind sort of work on developing new stories and new ideas. And so as much as possible, we also try to consume other content in order to keep the creativity sharp. Oh, that's a good practice. So you talked about Time Crest 4. Do you have a general time frame for when users might see that? Well, right now we haven't announced anything specific. The end of Time Crest 3 kind of alludes to the possibility of a Time Crest 4. Uh, I'd say right now is the best time to get into Time Crest since we recently launched a major rewrite to Time Crest 1 that added over 120,000 words and we really polished up the story. We also added a lot of uh, accessibility polish that makes uh, Time Crest really fun to get into if you are blind. People are still discussing and debating the story paths on social media, so I think there's still a lot of fresh content to access. That said, all I can say is we're hard at work on what's next, and I think some really amazing accessible content will be coming uh, eventually for fans of Sneaky Crab. So stay tuned. You keep talking about how many words are in the storyline for Time Crest. Just to calibrate people, how many words would be in a typical novel? 
That's a good question. So depending on the size of the novel, there are some sort of short young adult novels that can be as low as 40,000 words. I think a more standard novel size can be anywhere from 60 to 80,000 words. So even Time Crest 1 is a book and a half, at least. And just the added words to the story, that doesn't even count what was there before that we didn't rewrite. Just the added words. Incredible. That's a lot of writing. It's a challenging journey, but we're really proud of what we've put out. Well, congratulations on that. And it sounds like it's a fun game that many visually impaired people enjoy. And if they haven't tried it, they should check out. Thank you so much. You are listening to Eyes on Success. Success, 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 success. Now for this week's final item, how to learn more about the Time Crest fantasy game how to get it, and how to contact its creators, Justin Ng and Lisa Gu. Well, Justin, if people want to find out more about TimeCrest, I assume they can download it from the Apple App Store, but what other resources and contact information do you have for them? The easiest place is to just go to the website, timecrest.com, T-I-M-E-C-R-E-S-T, and you can get all of the information there. You can also search on X Twitter and look for TimeCrest, and we're always posting, letting people know the latest that's going on about TimeCrest. If somebody has a question, is there a way they can reach you? I think that the easiest way is to contact us over Twitter, and you can also send an email to support at sneakycrab.com, and one of us will be there to respond to you. And what does Sneaky Crab mean? Yeah, we brainstormed a lot of different names for our company, and we landed on Sneaky Crab. It comes from where Lisa's nickname, we call her The Crab, and we added the sneaky part to evoke a kind of playfulness we wanted in our games. Cool. And remember to check out AppleViz at appleviz.com, A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S.com, if you want to connect with other users of iOS devices and interact with people about the game in some nice forums. And all of that contact information, as usual, can be found in the show notes associated with this episode, which is episode 2342 at www.eyesonsuccess.net. That's it for today's show. Next week on Eyes on Success, we'll be talking about skateboarding. Justin Bishop was fully sighted when he started skateboarding at 10 years old. But despite losing all of his useful sight in his 20s, his dedication to skateboarding has been unwavering. We'll talk with Justin about his passion for skateboarding and what accommodations he makes to enable him to excel at this very active sport. So when you're finished saving the world in this fantasy game, join us next week in the real world for that episode. You've been listening to Eyes on Success, hosted and produced by Nancy Goodman Torpy and Peter Torpy. You can access the full archive of previous shows, subscribe to the podcast, and much more by going to our website, www.eyesonsuccess.net. If you have questions about anything you've heard on the show or have suggestions for future shows, send an email to hosts at eyesonsuccess.net. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. When to start.